Jacob Zuma has survived one already. What do you think uh, will happen this time? Just this is the fifth in a row. One of them was actually uh, an impeachment, a motion for impeachment. Um, if, if he survives, those who are protesting said they will keep at it. They will keep the pressure up. They're not backing. They're not going to back up. They'll keep uh, protesting, probably not in, in this way, but they're taking it to every city to let people know that the ANC, not just, not just President Zuma now, the ANC doesn't really think too much about them, you know, but um, they, they said they will keep at it, except that the constitution is changed. That's that, um, you know, we'll still see the president for the next two years. But if he remains in office, it's still going to be um, hectic for him, let me put it that way. Well, what, a, what a birthday president for Jacob Zuma, you know, the other way. Well, he's watching <laughs> up a storm right now, but, you know, um, it, it, they try to mind, but he's still he's still having those who are parting along with him in Soweto at the moment. Yeah, thank you, thank you for your thoughts on that, uh, Johannesburg uh, Bureau yes, Chief, uh, for Channel Television. Betty Dibia there. Moving on to other stories now, Benin Republic's Parliament has rejected a draft bill by President Patrice Talon for a referendum to reform the constitution, which includes a provision to reduce presidential terms from two to one. Now, the rejection of the bill has sparked public protests. Take a listen. Benin's parliament narrowly rejected a draft bill by President Patrice Talon for a referendum to reform the constitution, including a provision to reduce presidential terms from the current two to one. The rejection of the bill sparked public protest. Talon's efforts to reduce term limits after a year in office contrast with some other African leaders, including in Rwanda, Congo Republic and Burundi, who have scrapped them to stay in power. Talon, who came to power in a peaceful election one year ago, promised to reduce presidential terms from two five-year terms to one six-year term in a bid to reduce what he called presidential complacency in the tiny West African country. Speaking on a local talk show, Talon said he was ready to turn the page and respect the outcome of the vote. It's true that 60 members of the parliament were willing to examine the proposal of the bill, but unfortunately, 22 were not favorable and they had enough numbers to block it. But because the law in our country requires at least 63 votes in a parliament in order to review the revision of the constitution, so I respect that. Constitutional revision initiated by President Talon is now over. The vote triggered protests from civil society members and others who opposed the bill, saying just one term was open to abuse and did not give time for a president to court favor from voters for a second term. Those who voted against the changes said there should have been a public debate. Talon's peaceful election last year was seen as reinforcing the democratic credentials of the tiny nation in the West African region, where polls are often marred by violence, intimidation and rigging. The decision may have been rushed and is not a priority in the face of other challenges that the country is facing. Benner produces cotton, but its economy is flagging, in part because of falling oil prices that have hit its neighbor, Nigeria, its largest trading partner. Zambian opposition leader Hikainde Hichalema has been arrested and charged with treason for allegedly obstructing the motorcade of President Edgar Lungu. Hichalema, a wealthy businessman, was detained after an incident involving the motorcade as it passed through Mungo, that's 500 kilometers west of the capital, Lusaka. Zambian police chief told reporters that the opposition leaders disobeyed police orders to clear the way as he was putting the life of the head of state in danger. Five other people faced the same charges. His wife, Mutinta, alleges that the police want to kill her husband. Somali security forces have rescued at least eight sailors kidnapped from their Indian registered cargo ship. The deputy commander of the maritime force in Somalia's Galmuldag Abdul Rashid Ahmed says they were freed without a fight. But three of the pirates are in custody. The Al Khalsa was one of the three vessels in recent weeks to be hijacked after a five year lull. Piracy in the waters of Somalia and Yemen peaked in 2011 with more than 200 attacks. And here in Nigeria, clashes between the military and the police in Damaturu 
the Yobe state capital, northeast Nigeria, has left at least three people dead. Although the cause of the clash is not yet known, our correspondent reports that the town has been thrown into confusion. The state commissioner of police, Sumonu Adomaliki, has who confirmed the incident says men in military uniform abducted the squadron commander of Mopol 41. Dauda Fika. Meanwhile, the military spokesman in the state, Colonel Kaidio Musoya, uh, in a statement said a committee has been set up to end the fighting. Well, in a quest to become an international cycling country, Ugandan uh, Yusufu Mzira has founded a bicycle courier service in a Kampala suburb. He aims to empower the riders financially and also improve their skill and fitness in the hopes that one day they will represent Uganda at the Olympics and other international cycling tournaments. Members of the Kampala Cycling Club gather outside their headquarters ready for a day of work and training. <laughs> They ride in and around Uganda's capital city, delivering packages as part of a courier service provided by the club to raise money and give the members an income while keeping them in top cycling form. The club was started by Ugandan cycling veteran Yusuf Mbazira as a way to reach out to youth from poor backgrounds and get them into the sport. Now he's using the delivery service to turn the club's riders into professionals with hopes of one day qualifying for the Olympics. The point was really, really very challenging maintaining cycling without um, having the source of income to support the cycling sport. And we looked at what could we do to support the athletes to earn a living and also to the community, entire community to benefit out of the sporting activities we are doing. Cycling was recognized in Uganda as the sport for the poor. Mbazira got the idea for the courier service while on a trip to the Netherlands in 2010 when he saw messengers running errands and bicycles. Coming up on Network Africa. Nigerians in South Africa's Limpopo province narrate their harrowing experiences of being attacked.